Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Moody Church's devotional series on Holy Week. I'm Pastor Bill Van Tynan, and I lead the global outreach and stewardship efforts here at the Moody Church. Today, I'm going to read from Matthew 21, uh, which is the Palm Sunday or Triumphal Entry passage. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what this was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And so this verse, these verses, proclaim to us, The king is here. Uh, Jesus himself encouraged that thinking by fulfilling the prophecy from Zechariah 9, verse 9, by choosing to ride in on a donkey. Also, as the crowd shouted, Hosanna, and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, um, Jesus accepted that praise. But what we soon realize is this king was not as the people had expected. Up until that time, the Lord had often used political oppression uh, to punish the people of Israel. And then when they repented and he restored them, it was usually through political and economic blessing. And so nobody told the people of Israel, that's Old Testament thinking, now we're in the New Testament and the rules of the game have, have changed. And so they were disappointed when this king that they had waited for for so long ended up not conquering the empire of Rome, but instead dying and being killed by the very empire he was supposed to conquer. And so uh, we're left disappointed uh, in Jesus' first coming. But uh, while we know his first coming ended in disappointment, we know that he is coming again. Uh, as he so often told us, his kingdom is not of this world. And this uh, second coming will be even better than we can imagine. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 through 16 tells us, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then in Revelation 1, 13 through 16, we, we read, uh, and this is talking about Jesus, And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. His face was like the sun shining in its brilliance. Notice the use of the word like here. Uh, John didn't even have the words to describe Jesus as he really appeared. And what kind of city will Jesus enter when he returns? Revelation 21 verses 1 through 7 give us a glimpse of this. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. 
Now that is a triumphal entry, and we share in it. And when should we expect this return? Revelation 22, verse 20 says, He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So today, let's remember Jesus' entrance into the ancient city of Jerusalem, but let us anticipate the far greater arrival of our risen King and Savior into the new Jerusalem, the final and triumphant entry. Let our hearts and our voices cry throughout the world, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are uh, our King and the risen Savior. And Lord, let us eagerly anticipate your return. But Lord, also give us a heart for the lost who do not know you. Lord, give us a sense of urgency that as you say you are coming soon, Lord, um, let us desperately seek uh, to share you uh, with those who don't know you yet. And we pray this all in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen.